So as I alluded to in my EDC video, I'm also going to do a video breaking down uh, what I have inside of my truck. It's not as much as you guys might think. Uh, a lot of people get uh, really intense about uh, what they have in their vehicles, be it uh, you know all their medical equipment, uh, their, their weapons that they have to have because they're going to think they can fight their way to their vehicle to get their, you know, rifle to really lay down fire. In many situations, most situations, that is just not feasible. Uh, so this is what I have here. This is a 2023 Toyota Tacoma. It has four-wheel drive and a V6. Other than that, it's kind of a base model. It's the SR5, so it's just kind of like one or two steps up. So it's nothing crazy there. Uh, but I will show you what I have on the inside because I do have some good stuff that I think everyone should have. All right, so starting in the driver's seat, I do have two old radios. These are just Motorola, I believe, XPR. Yeah, XPR 6550s. Uh, I got these at a military surplus store for like, uh, I don't remember, like 50 bucks or something like that for the set. Uh, and then I just threw FRS and GMRS channels and a couple other re local repeaters and things on these. Uh, these are just UHF only, but they do offer the ability to just have cheap radios that are reliable in uh, in my truck so i do have these in case i need to toss somebody a radio and if i don't get it back i'm really not that hurt because uh, at the end of the day i paid what people pay for like baofeng uv5 r's for these so not too not too stressed about it so i have two of those uh they are fully charged up and then i just have those set on uh, the gmrs channels so if i need to toss somebody a radio i can do that uh also in the door pocket i do have uh a gerber this is the gerber diesel had this one for a very long time, uh, but it is really nice to just have a set of pliers and a couple other things in the vehicle. Also down at the bottom of here, I do have a bundle of zip ties. They're just like 10 inch long zip ties that I just have uh, bundled together. All right, going further into the vehicle here, I have a handheld radio that I have hooked up to an antenna. I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, but I have an antenna outside the vehicle and it's just hooked into my handheld radio. This will make roughly if I had to put a number on it, probably about three times the performance, maybe even more out of your handheld, having it hooked up to a really good antenna on the outside of your vehicle versus trying to use it from the inside of your vehicle. Because, you know, obviously vehicles are metal. You're going to just end up with a, like essentially a giant Faraday cage effect to the radio. And it's just not going to uh, travel a very far distance. So having an external antenna definitely, uh, definitely goes a long ways. I do have a speaker mic right here. Um, and then I just have it clipped to this little storage thing right here. I also have a handheld offline GPS. I have this one loaded with topographical maps and all of that as well. Uh, and I can just fire this up in the event that my cell phone is dead or whatever. I have another means of GPS. As far as stuff in the front of the vehicle, that's really about it. I do have a medical kit right back here that I can reach by hand. It's on a Velcro tear away. So I can just grab this and rip it off from the driver's seat. I think that is important versus having this thing buried somewhere else. All right, so working your way around the vehicle, I don't have a whole lot of stuff back here simply because um, the area that I live, it's not super prone to break-ins. However, they do happen on occasion. I don't want to have to really deal with losing a ton of stuff. Um, so I don't keep a rifle in the truck. I know that's a point of controversy for some people. I personally don't think that that is appropriate in the vast majority of situations. The highest likelihood of you having a uh, weapon stolen is, is actually from a vehicle according to the stats. So in my opinion, in most places, it's just not a good idea to have guns inside of vehicles. Uh, smashing grabs are a thing. They'll just bust your window out, grab whatever they can real quick. Hopefully it's not a gun. That's a problem for more reasons than just one. I do have a rain jacket, how appropriate as I'm getting rained on right now. And then I have a five pound fire extinguisher that I picked up. This is a type ABC. This will work on any kind of electrical or chemical fire or just standard combustibles as well. So I do think something like this is a good thing to have in your vehicle. Uh, they either externally mounted or sometimes, you know, internally, uh, just having a fire extinguisher is a good idea to, uh, to help if there's you know a vehicle fire, motorcycle accident, things like that. I have a uh, couple large contractor black trash bags. These are also just good things to have if you go to an event and you know you need trash bags for something if you're out on the range or whatever. It's just really nice to have some trash bags with you. I got a hat and then my rain jacket, obviously. And then depending on where you live, having a nice scraper is always a nice thing to have uh, and a snow brush. So. Having that is pretty nice. I'm out in the uh, Eastern United States. We don't get a ton of snow out here. I used to live in Wisconsin. We got a lot more, but for me, I think that uh, just this general kind of stuff is, uh, is kind of nice to have. Underneath the rear seat, fold this forward here. I have uh, two different toe straps. I've got one that's got a hook and then I've got the, uh, the slip style uh, with the nylon strap right here. 
I realized in post I totally forgot to go over the rear passenger seat, uh, what was going on behind it. So in here I've got a fuel siphon kit, I have the whole like siphon pump with a hose and all of that. Uh, this just allows me to siphon fuel from <clears throat> sources, so if I need to do that I can. I have a, another jacket back here that's slightly heavier, I think it's a north face there. And then I've got two sets of boat rations, so these are... 410 calories per serving. There's nine servings per brick and I've got two of them back here. So if I need emergency food, I've got some of that. And then as you see, I have other bottles of water floating around my truck. So I've got some water as well. All right, we're gonna work our way around to the other side of the vehicle now. As I mentioned, having a uh, quality antenna uh, such as this one here, this is a Tram 1180. Um, this is a great antenna. <laughs> it has a, a good bit of gain to it. It works with DHF and UHF and it overall has performed exceptionally well. I've been very happy with this thing. Uh, I do have it on an NMO mount, uh, which is right here. Uh, it just bolts into the side of the truck right here in some existing hardware so you don't have to drill any holes. All right, so last up, medical kit. I'll give you a quick breakdown of this. Just got a handle, you can just grab it and rip it away. Uh, very clearly marked, hey, this is medical equipment. Uh, Obviously, it's nice to have it marked. So you just pop this thing open, and inside of it, I've got uh, some tape that just fell out, it's non-critical. Two doses of Narcan, a uh, rolled gauze bandage here. I've got two cat tourniquets, these are the Gen 7. I've got some combat quick clot gauze. I've got, I believe that's an ETD there, yeah, an emergency trauma dressing. Uh, I've got another ETD from uh, North American Rescue here. Um, some compressed gauze from North American Rescue here, and then a set of chest seals. I think that all of that stuff is very critical for stopping major bleeding of arterial bleeds, things like that. It's just a really good idea to have that kind of stuff on you. Uh, some other nice to haves uh, is some quick clot that's made for superficial wounds, so like lacerations that are not super deep. You just wanna throw something on top of it. This is just some gauze that's impregnated with quick clot. Uh, it's just a good idea to just have some, some stuff like that. It's a nice to have, it's not a need to have. Uh, there's an MPA also, in my opinion, a nice to have, not a need to have. Uh, and then some gloves. In a lot of situations, I've found you're probably not gonna have time to glove up in some, in some emergency trauma things. It's, it, your, your primary concern is just stopping the bleeding. I do have a water gel um, burn dressing here. This is a, a gel dressing you apply onto uh, burn wounds. Really definitely helps uh, ease some of the pain and also uh, try and save what tissue is left. Uh, then I also have two of the uh, decompression needles. These are something that only experienced people that are trained in how to use them should have them. And even then it's kind of a iffy, iffy thing in my opinion. These are used for if someone has a collapsed lung and there's air getting trapped in between their uh, Cap, their chest cavity and their lung, um, compressing their lung even more. You can use this to relieve the pressure. Uh, you have to do that uh, in the appropriate spot. Uh, otherwise, you could end up stabbing them in the heart or uh, some kind of artery or something like that. You just, you just don't want to do that. So uh, I do have some trauma shears here. Those are nice to have uh, for, you know, getting good visibility of certain areas of uh, wounds. And then I have two Sharpies. And then behind all of this, I have a little boo-boo kit right here. Uh, it's got some band-aids and gauze and some alcohol wipes, things like that. And then way in the back, I've got a folded up SAM splint. I just have that in there just in the event that I need to, uh, to brace uh, a broken limb or something like that. I get this stuff is kind of expensive. You go and add this up, it's probably several hundred dollars for the stuff in here. Uh, I found that it's just kind of what I feel comfortable having in my vehicle. I do want the ability to save someone's life if that is possible. Now, it's not just shootings that you're gonna come across potentially. The more likely one is going to be something like a motorcycle accident. Uh, it is not uncommon for motorcyclists to wipe out. Uh, a lot of times they're doing stupid stuff or they make mistake. They have you know, a quarter inch of uh, surface contact underneath their tire at any given time. It's just, it's going to happen sometimes where you're gonna have motorcycle accidents. Uh, someone hits a guardrail, something like that with a bike, they're probably gonna lose a leg. It's not a good thing to have happen, so I prefer to have some medical equipment, so if I can render aid, I wanna be able to. All right, so the last things we've got here, underneath the uh, seat here, I've got uh, some tie-down straps, some bungee straps, and then uh, some more tie-down straps here, the factory jack and all of that, obviously I'm not gonna get rid of that and then a set of jumper cables. And then right behind the rear seat, 
I've got a jump starter. Not bad things to have. Other than that, guys, I a couple things I do recommend. Uh, don't have large identifying things. Yes, the antenna is kind of an identifying feature, uh, but uh, things that kind of telegraph the kind of person that you are. Uh, so avoid, in my opinion, uh, in this day and age, it's 2024, avoid uh, election bumper stickers, fla uh, American flags, avoid 1776 logos, avoid three percenter logos, anything like that. You just, you don't want to have that on your vehicle, in my opinion. It just draws unnecessary attention to you. And in the vast majority of situations, it's not going to help you out in the least. All it's going to do is cause issues. So avoid any kind of stickers and things like that. I think it's just kind of tacky personal opinion. It can also potentially cause issues with vehicle break-ins. I, I haven't looked at the stats, but I would venture to guess there's probably a higher correlation between uh, uh, firearm thefts out of vehicles and people that have a come and take it sticker on there because someone's going to come and take it. I'm just saying. Well, guys, that was about it. Uh, if you did like this video, go ahead, like, subscribe, share. Uh, I've, I don't believe that I'm anything unique here or special. Hey, come here. I don't believe I'm anything unique or special here. I do think that uh, the vast majority of guys are gonna have something similar to this, but if there's something that you saw in my video that you liked and you wanted to see more of, or uh, you wanted to comment about, go ahead and just let me know down below. If there's something that you think I'm leaving out, also let me know down below. I'm always open to changing. Your gear selection is always going to be a journey, not a destination. Uh, this is by far not the final form of what I'll have in this truck, I guarantee it. I do think that there are things that I can improve on. Uh, I do think there are things that I have pretty well nailed down. If you guys want to see more content like this in the future, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. One thing to remember, guys, do something today to make yourself better for tomorrow. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye.